Hey, it's James here, and in today's lesson, I'm going to be talking all about the Nashville number system. If you're interested in learning and understanding how to play more songs, this could be really super, super important. So please check it out all the way to the end. Hey, it's James here from ebassguitar.com and today I want to answer a question from Barry who's one of my Bass Lab Plus subscribers. This question has actually come from quite a few of the members of the Bass Lab Plus which is my private coaching and training community helping a beginner to intermediate bass players become better bass players. And this is all about the Nashville number system or the Roman numeral chord system as we tend to call it over here in the UK a little bit more. This for me is one of the most important things to understand in music, particularly if you want to learn and play more songs and memorize them too. So first off, there is a checklist that comes with this lesson, which you can grab from the description or below this video, which is five steps to learning more songs faster. And that will take you through my process of how I've learned over 500 songs over the past 15 or so years. But the Nashville number system and the Roman numeral chord system are essentially the same thing. And I want to give you a quick overview of what it is and then I'll show you how to apply it to some songs and why it is so, so super important. So if we take the major scale, I'm going to take a standard C major scale. We're going to go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Well, some people may say Do, Me, Re, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, like that. Okay, that is kind of the backbone of all Western music. But what we can do is we can build a chord off each degree of the scale. So we can build a chord off here. We can call, build a chord off the second degree, the third degree, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And we can do this building chords from all of the notes within the scale. We don't stray outside at all. So what we do is we take every other note. So I'm gonna show you how to do this now. So what we will do is we will take a C, and then we will take an E, and then we will take a G. And that gives us an arpeggio, but quite easily we could play a chord, which I will do, like that. So we can do this off the C like that, and that gives us a C major. Then we can do it off the D. Okay, that will give us D, F, and A, which is a D minor. Do the same off the E, which will give us E, G, and B, which is an E minor. And then we can do the same on the F, which gives us an F major. And then we can do the same on the G, G, B, D, which gives us a G chord. And then we can do the same for the sixth degree of the scale. And that will give us an A minor chord or A minor arpeggio. And then the last one, so far they've either been major or minor, but now we have this little cheeky kind of half diminished. So B, D, and F. And so we get this B half diminished chord. So we can go up each of these. Like so, and those in itself are great technical exercises. I used to practice these all the time. Like that, but we're not here really to talk about technique. So what we can do is we can have chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, and chord seven. And I'm gonna take you through a few different chord sequences which are built up that way. So we're gonna take um, a standard one, four, five chord sequence. So we're gonna go. Like that. And you will find this chord sequence in, this is the chorus, I'm gonna pick a couple out of the sky from my head. This is the chorus to Mr. Jones by the Counting Crows. Or again, this is um, the chorus again to Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's hundreds upon hundreds of songs. So I said, what about Breakfast at Tiffany's? See, I'm not a singer, but. So Mr. 
Mr. Jones. I'm gonna think I have a song to me. It's a bit faster, miss. So that is Mr. Jones. So that is a standard one for five chord sequence. And now the question is that often comes up at this point is, well, why don't you just call it C, F and G? That's much, much easier. But when you start thinking of it in this Roman numeral or sort of numeric system is the beauty of it is you can then transfer it into any key. So if I take Mr. Jones by the Counting Crows, for instance, that is in the key of C. So, um, which is the key that we were just playing in. But if I take the chorus to Breakfast at Tiffany's, that's in the key of D. So, and the beauty of this is it makes it really, really super simple to transpose songs around the neck and into different keys. It also conceptually makes it far easier because you can see the relationship between the chords. And once you can see that relationship, it then becomes easier to learn and memorize the song. So this is all about learning more songs faster. And then crucially, you start seeing the relationship between different songs, how different songs have the same chord sequences in them. So what I want to do now is take another few chord sequences just to explain this concept and you can hear my dodgy singing again. I'm going to talk about probably um, one of Probably, this is probably the most prolific, I reckon, chord sequence in, in pop music. And this is the one, six, four, five chord sequence. So. So I'm doing this in the key of G major here. So it's G down to E minor. So that is the chorus to Crocodile Rock Boat. So, I wish I could sing. But I'm going to take the same chord sequence now, put it up into A, up a tone, and I'm going to suddenly be playing Stand By Me. So, down to the, this is A, sixth chord. D Okay, so again, one, six, four, five, but we've built a bit of a bass line, that iconic bass line around. But if you're working with a singer who suddenly goes, and this is very, very common with singers, if they've had a bit of a rough night or drunk too much or have got a cold or whatever, they might say, can you put it down a tone or uh, a whole step or change the key? And all you have to do is think, yeah, of course, we can just shift that down. So I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna take it down a whole step now into G. So you can see by kind of engaging with the Nashville number system and starting to think that way, or the Roman numeral chord sequence, it makes it easier to learn songs and it makes it easier to transpose songs as well. The jazz guys use this all of the time to talk about much more complex tunes. So to give you another couple of examples of this, I'm gonna take the chord sequence Easy by Lionel Richie. And this is a one, three, two, five. So we've got and we're in the key of A flat so that is an A flat to a C minor to a B flat to an E so one three um, two five like that so that is quite that's more of a unique song but that really is the sound of that whole song. So I'm gonna talk now a little bit more. Let's take it out of four bar kind of chord sequence territory and move it into this. And one of my all time favorite songs is My Girl, the old Motown standard. And this is goes from chord one to chord four, the verse. So I got C to F. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so chord one to chord four, and then when we go hit that chorus section, so once again. So if you took the old way, you'd think of that as C, D minor, F and G, nothing wrong with that. But we could also think of this as chord one, to chord two, to chord four, to chord five, like that. So it's a much, much easier way of starting to conceptualize things. And I'm gonna give you one more example from the classic Journey song, Don't Stop Believing. So let me play the bass line. Now, that is a bass line which has a lot of movement in there. So the typically a lot of musicians just learn that as one fluid kind of line, which is okay, but it's when you start to see how the chords in there all relate to each other, that's when it all starts coming together because those passing notes can make things confusing. So what we have in here, we're in the key of E. So it goes from chord one, four, Chord one to chord five, to chord six, and then we have another four bars on there which has a subtle tweak in it. So then we do chord five, and then we go to chord three to chord four. So the sort of bare bones bass line, which would work actually in a real situation, could be. three okay that is the basic structure that is the framework that everything's built on then we can start to add the decoration to it so So you can see there is loads in there. So I really encourage you to start learning the Nashville numbers system. We've covered a lot in this lesson, but I wanted to give you an overview of what it is and why it's so important. So guys, that's the end of this lesson. If you're interested in learning more songs, this is really, really super important stuff. So don't forget, you can grab your five steps to learning more songs faster checklist below this video. Also, if you've enjoyed this lesson, please do give it a like and share on social and leave a comment below. My name's been James from eBay's Guitar and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now.